SpaceX following up a big weekend with even more excitement. The four astronauts who took off from Cape Canaveral late Sunday will dock at the ISS, the International Space Station, in just a couple of hours around 11 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Now, this mission has huge implications for the private sector space industry and could be a preview for the future of space travel. Here with more on what's ahead is Bloomberg News' Justin Bachman, who covers the commercial space industry for us. So, Justin, um, we are now waiting for the docking of the capsule at the ISS. Is this as complicated as the initial launch itself? Well, it's probably not, but it's just different in, in the sense that this is all automated. Uh, the vehicle knows what it's supposed to do, and it's you know guided by a lot of sensors and instruments. So really, the, the humans at, at that point will be standing by watching, making sure that everything is going to plan. But it's probably less complicated in the sense that you're not talking about a, a controlled explosion that has to escape Earth's gravity. Gotcha. And you mentioned the humans. Apparently, it's not just for astronauts. There was also a surprise uh, who made it on board. There was, yeah. The, uh, the crews always take a sort of a, a amusing little tchotchke uh, as a zero-G indicator when they get to orbit. Uh, the crew this time didn't want to say what it was, but it turned out to be a baby Yoda doll, which everybody saw on the, uh, the NASA broadcast uh, after they got into orbit. So that was kind of fun. And I'm sure Disney was pretty thrilled with that as well. Now, this particular mission is just the first of a series of crewed NASA flights that SpaceX is contracted to provide. What can you tell us about the timeline for future flights? Well, the next flight is scheduled for the end of March, and they're going to be flying the exact same first-stage rocket booster that flew on Sunday. So the idea is that there will be a very regular cadence of seven of these over the next 15 to 18 months. And then you've got a second provider in Boeing, which is also building a, a completely separate vehicle for NASA to fly to the ISS. So, you know, two companies, there's going to be a whole lot of... Uh, flights going and a lot more astronauts than has been the case in the, in the recent past. And I'm glad you brought up Boeing because I know NASA awarded contracts to both SpaceX and Boeing at the same time, but we never really hear that much about what Boeing's doing. Why is that? Well, Boeing has encountered some software glitches with their software design and engineering programs. So there's been a lot of rework. Pretty much all of this year has been you know, revamping and going through a lot of testing and getting that uh, back to where it needs to be. And so they're planning in the first quarter to, to fly a second uncrewed flight to the ISS because the first one uh, in December of 2019 was not able to get to the right orbit and dock with the station. Boeing decided to do that again after they had completed uh, a large amount of software work. So that's why we haven't heard as much from Boeing, but they are definitely expected to get back on track and uh, start ferrying astronauts as well. Yeah, and of course, Boeing has been pretty preoccupied with its 737 MAX jet dealing with the FAA and other regulators. Now, speaking of the FAA, this particular SpaceX launch was the first spaceflight licensed by the FAA. What did the weekend mean for the future of space tourism when it comes to how the FAA regulates this? Well, it, it meant a lot in the sense that it's no longer NASA flying their astronauts on their own equipment. It's, it's really becoming a commercial pursuit, uh, like an airline in a sense, where you would have a private company with a vehicle, you would have them sign up customers to fly, and the FAA, it, you know, their role is to ensure the public safety if something goes wrong. And you would also have the National Transportation Safety Board investigating any accidents just like they do on the commercial side of aviation. So it's really moving from a, a government overseen, you know, government driven to the regulator steps into the, the, the private market. And that's a really big shift that we haven't seen before. Yeah, Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic has sold, what, 600 tickets, and I believe it's at about $250,000 a piece for trips into space. And, of course, this is all in advance of when it eventually makes those flights. These trips apparently won't take place until Richard Branson himself makes his own trip into space, but that's been delayed by COVID. Can you give us an update on that front? Yeah, just today, uh, Virgin Galactic had said that the flight they were planning, the test flight this month, was going to be delayed at least for two weeks. So the market reaction was that that could carry implications for, um, you know, their later flights, including the one with Branson, which was supposed to occur 
in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, the company's not saying anything specific, so we don't know if there will be a delay to that flight, but I think the assumption is that you know, the, the rules that were imposed by the state of New Mexico have made the work a little bit slower and, and that that's what could happen. All right, Justin Bachman, fantastic to get your take on uh, what's been a historic mission by SpaceX. Thank you so much, Justin Bachman. Thank you. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.